the inside story on the issues that affect you and your community. This is Local 12 Newsmakers. While it certainly works very well for the needs of the coroner's office with respect to a crime lab, unfortunately, um, there's too much uh, other building and too much other property uh, that we don't have a, a ready or a good use for. I'm rather frustrated uh, and very disappointed that a um, generous offer from Catholic Health Partners has been returned. Good morning and welcome to Local 12 Newsmakers. I'm Dan Hurley. A little over two years ago, Mercy Hospitals offered to sell the Mercy Mount Airy facility and its 68-acre site to Hamilton County for one dollar. Two weeks ago, the three Hamilton County commissioners voted unanimously to decline that offer, saying that renovation uh, of that situation and conversion of that building, the costs were too high. Here's a report by Local 12 reporter Jeff Hirsch that he prepared that day. Mount Airy ended up being too large and too expensive of a project. So how did what seemed like a dream come true? Wow, <clears throat> a hospital. We could really put, we could really use a lot of those spaces again. Turn into a thanks, but no thanks. Why did Hamilton County turn down a free new home for the coroner's crime lab? Here's one point of view. There's really no such thing as a free lab. You know, the bottom line is, um, uh, while we may have gotten the building itself for a buck, um, all the other costs are just simply too much. And here's another view. Politics, trying to piggyback a new home for the Board of Elections onto the new home for the crime lab. Well, that certainly didn't help. And I think, um, I, I have no idea how tying the future of the coroner's office morgue and the crime lab to the Board of Elections uh, I don't know how that could possibly serve this community. But in voting to reject the free hospital offer, county commissioners told the coroner her lab would fill less than half the building. It's just too expensive to fill the rest with other county offices. It worked perfectly for you. Um, uh, believe me, we may not find another building that is as perfect. I don't know. For you, um, I hope we will. But the problem is, is that the, the, the building uh, in the main in, in its entirety, the other 80% of it, and then 70 acres, were not perfect for the county. So now what? No one disagrees on the need for a new crime lab and a new morgue, but the obvious question is, where do you get the money? Well, Dr. Samarco says, ask the voters, see if they're willing to pay for it. Samarco so says those same voters okayed a tax hike to fix up the museum center. And she's basically daring the county commissioners to put public safety, a new crime lab, on the ballot as well. Well, I don't understand why they're afraid to put it to the voters. Why not put it to the voters? Ask them. I'm positive that the voters are going to say, yeah, crime lab is very important to us. Make it happen. To discuss the decision two weeks ago, and maybe more importantly, where we go from here, I am joined this morning by Dr. Lashmi San Marco, the Hamilton County Coroner. Dr. San Marco was elected coroner in November 2013. Dr. San Marco is a Democrat, and Todd Portoon is one of the three Hamilton County Commissioners. Mr. Portoon was first elected to the commission in 1999 and has been re-elected three times. Mr. Portoon is also a Democrat. Welcome back to Newsmakers for both Dan. of you. Yeah. Um, now, let's start with you, Dr. San Marco. How critical, how immediate is it the need to find a new crime lab, more, more space for your office? It's, it's very critical, and I think that the need has been immediate for many, many years, probably over five years. And my predecessor, Dr. Bhatti, was the first one to point out some of the uh, challenges in the building. And then the commissioners um, hired a crime lab design uh, the company to come and evaluate and do an assessment. So my first day in office, there was a spiral bound notebook on my desk um, with lots and lots of pages outlining so many of those deficiencies and challenges and basically saying that the building is at a point both for the morgue and the crime lab that it's critical to make changes, find a new place, expand, do something basically because a lot of the equipment is failing as well. One follow-up. Do the morgue 
and the crime lab have to be in the same place? Could one get separated out and you use the building that you're in now up in the UC complex for one of those two functions and then have another, another spot for the second function? And that's been brought up and we have been open to all suggestions, any and all locations and all suggestions. And there are some challenges to doing that. There are some difficulties. There are some inefficiencies that will happen. Um, more people would have to be hired. We have a lot of people that are cross-trained. Um, toxicology would have to stay with the morgue, which is a division of the crime lab, and therefore we'd have to double up on, on people again. Um, the morgue itself has some real issues. You know, we've, we've talked about the sewer issues in the morgue mm -hmm. and the autopsy area. So staying in the same building would require a pretty significant uh, cleanup and, and renovation of that building, even for the morgue to stay in there, um, just because of uh, the plumbing and, and sewer issues in the mm -hmm. morgue and the electricity. Todd, do you agree with that basic assessment that the the need is significant and immediate? Yes. So in a word. In a word, the answer to that is yes. But uh, there are also very many other needs that are significant at the county. And uh, we're coming at this issue from the standpoint of, first of all, where do you get the money? Um, Dr. Smarco suggested that we take this to the voters. I actually proposed a sales tax increase last year in our budget to deal with, among other things, the issue of the coroner's crime lab and raising the money that we needed for solving that problem. That proposal was not accepted by the other two commissioners. So we're left then with the prospect of how do you come up with not just the money for uh, what Dr. Samarco needs in running a crime lab and what the needs of local law enforcement are for that, but still all of our other needs with respect to other operations of the county. Our revenues are down, as has been said time and time again on this show and elsewhere, mm -hmm. by 35 percent from where they were in 2006. We didn't have enough money to balance our budget without cutting into operations of the county uh, in many respects uh, across the board this past year when we balanced the budget for 2015. So the county just does not have any money sitting around from any source or any place in order to address this problem short of a sales tax, which again I proposed and was, was turned down. Now, so we, we're, we gotta look uh, at other avenues. Can we build a regional lab where other communities are pitching in, other counties are pitching in? And that is, is there, something that has been suggested, correct? It has been. Um, is there a way to partner with the Attorney General's office in order to, uh, to run the crime lab? Because understand, statutorily, running a crime lab is not a function of county coroners in the state of Ohio. It's the function of the Attorney General and the Bureau of, of Criminal Investigations, BCI, at the state. And Mike DeWine ran on this as a platform uh, the first time he ran for Attorney General saying he was going to solve this problem for Ohio's 88 counties, and, and he didn't do it. And uh, so therein lies another avenue. A third potential source of money, Dan, is all the drug forfeiture money that uh, local law enforcement has access to. Uh, if the, the prosecutor, the sheriff, uh, the city of Cincinnati, the 49, 48 other uh, local jurisdictions outside of Cincinnati, uh, would share some of their drug forfeiture money to help solve this problem because we do this to meet the needs of local law enforcement and prosecution. That at least would be a start. But they also would money. say that they're already using that money for things that they need. Well, they, they've got to prioritize just like we do. Okay. And, and those, those uh, drug forfeiture monies, uh, in many respects, uh, are sort of the, the, the private um, uh, funds that uh, other, other law enforcement uses for their own specific purposes outside of general fund prioritization. They need to make this a priority. The, the, the way that Todd was laying this out and that the function of the crime lab is constitutionally, in theory, whatever, however you want to put it, the, attorney gen the state attorney general's responsibility, how would you see, what's your reaction to the idea of of having a regional crime lab that's not under the control of your office, that would be under control of the Attorney General's office? You know, and this is something that's come up several times, and um, we're the second largest county in Ohio, 
and Cuyahoga County runs their own crime lab and um, that is under the auspices of the coroner's office, the medical examiner's office. And um, I think BCII does a great job. We have 88 counties in Ohio. And we are regional already. We serve not only Hamilton County, but our surrounding Ohio counties, um, Northern Kentucky, and three counties in Indiana. So we are regional. And we do charge for all out-of-county work. So we're bringing revenue into our office to help support the morgue, which can't, would really not be able to do without asking for more money from the taxpayers without the crime lab. So we are regional. We have explored the idea of partnering with the Attorney General and becoming their Southwest partner. Mm -hmm. um, and the Attorney General will be the first one to tell you, I think, that um, law enforcement here is absolutely insistent that we need to have a local crime lab under local control because they don't want to take a number in 88 counties. They want a crime lab that will be efficient, uh, save the taxpayers a lot of money, and most of all, be very responsive to them. And we are. They have direct access to all of us. But Dan, therein, therein is the issue, okay? Local law enforcement uh, that is driving this discussion in some respects that we maintain and that the taxpayers of Hamilton County fund uh, a regional crime lab uh, without uh, sort of a break-even contribution for the, uh, the, the functions that are performed. I don't see the, the other counties ponying up for the cost of building a new crime lab, uh, for example. I mean, if we're going to have a regional crime lab, we need to have our adjoining communities talk about contributing at that level well, in order to do that. But well, here's what I'm saying. If, if this is a priority with local law enforcement, which I don't deny that, it, that it's not, um, and it may very well be, and I will also say in the same breath that BCI is not doing the turnaround in the time that Dr. Samarco's uh, office is doing. They are not meeting the needs of local law enforcement. But um, should that be solely the responsibility of Hamilton County taxpayers to fund the costs of what is the Attorney General's statutory responsibility and to provide priority premium service to local law enforcement without, again, the drug money uh, being uh, distributed in part to help us solve the solution. There's got to be more of a regional solution to this issue than just simply Hamilton County that doesn't have the money to run all of our other operations to come up with what is in essence uh, a significant well, cost. Before I let go of this, on the idea that Dr. San Marco has put out of putting a uh, tax uh, to the voters, asking the voters if they will support it. Right. Okay, you said you proposed it. I did. Are we in a situation though where sort of the, for the last 15 years it's been you can't have any new tax unless something else comes off the tax rolls. So there has to be uh, no tax increase mm -hmm. is sort of, is, is, it, is there any way to take something off the tax rolls, let it roll off, and then get this on, or is, is there any way to break that sort of policy that's been there that we can never do anything new? Well, um, Are no, we stuck? No, no, well, we're not stuck in terms of doing anything new, and, and the example of that is the um, ICONS tax that was approved by the voters just this past November for Museum Center. That was a new tax. Nothing came off um, to... It, it, at an equal dollar value of what that tax was Some all about. Some things did so roll off, but not, but it, not, not, equal not, not an equal dollar value. So that it was a new tax that was accepted by, uh, by the voters. So I would say that you don't necessarily have to have a, a one for one kind of scenario. The, the, the problem, though, is it, do you do another property tax? Would that be sufficient, um, A? B, do we look at it from the standpoint of a sales tax, which is more appropriate because if this is a, a center that is providing regional service, you want People a regional source of money, which a sales tax is. Our problem in Hamilton County, though, is that we are, are virtually out of our, our um, uh, authority with respect to adding sales tax. We only have a quarter cent left right. because we're still paying for the stadiums and the lease obligations yeah, from I don't 1996. Want to go there. <laughs> no, we no we don't want to go there, but, but, but we the as the commissioners have to deal with the reality right. no, no, of no, what I, that I is. I, you know, 
I want to. I have to take a break, but I want to come back because the interesting thing that's, you know, you two are singing from the same songbook this morning, but you ended up voting against what her proposal was, and I want to come back and figure out how we understand that and then how we go forward. So stay tuned. Dr. Sam Marco and Commissioner Portune are staying, and we'll return right after the break to discuss where we go from here. Welcome back. I'm joined this morning by Dr. Lashmi San Marco, the Hamilton County Coroner, and Todd Portune, one of the three Hamilton County Commissioners. Um, about two weeks before the vote was taken, the Democratic Chair, Tim Burke, the chair of both of your party, um, made a statement and sent out as a letter, but we also interviewed him that day. So let's listen to what he has to say. They don't want Dr. San Marco to re to succeed. That's my concern. The two of the county commissioners are Republican. The county coroner is a Democrat. Not true at all. I, 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 uh, like I said, a crime lab's critically important. Okay. But that's not what I heard it happened at the meeting at the Rotary <laughs> luncheon. <laughs> so the question becomes, were you surprised? Was Tim surprised? He didn't seem to have his own troops in line here, much less, or he hadn't talked to them. Ten talked to Todd. Were you surprised by the vote? Honestly, I was surprised, yeah. I mean, I expected it from Commissioner Hartman and Commissioner Monzel, and, you know, I thought, well, it probably won't happen because those two probably will vote against it. But, you know, from the beginning, we've said that there are a lot of different options on how to do this in a private partner, uh, private and public partnership. And this is a big building. I'm not saying it isn't. It's 68 acres. There's a lot of potential with what you can do with that if you're developers. There was supposed to be an RFQ, a request for qualifications sent out for developers to develop the rest of that property. That would have been a great way to approach this. I mean, the same thing happened with the Goodyear factory in Akron, and they've done some great things with that. So there were a lot of different things uh, I think you could have done with it. They spent a little over a year, um, and it just felt like that was a lot of time to spend and not come up with an accurate or a valid solution. Did, did you send out that RFQ? Did, did you look into developing some of the acreage that's there? Well, an RFQ was not sent out, no, but um, the idea of development was considered. Um, um, for example, if we were able to sell off uh, 20 or 30 acres of the, the site at what the going rate is per acre, $50,000 per acre, I mean, that would have raised a million to a million and a half dollars, which is a, a drop in the bucket towards the, the, the 20 million initially needed just for the, the corners. Uh, end of, of the building, the 20% that would be used for that. The other 80%, which is going to add uh, exponentially more money. Um, the, the, the costs of this building, and again, Dan, the, the, it's not that the building, as I said at our meeting the other day, the building works well for the coroner. It doesn't work well for the county. Okay. And we had to think from the very beginning of how else do we use that property. How else do we use that building? How else do we use the 70 acres that it sits on? In terms of partisanship, um, there was a difference between us as a, as a board. And I looked at this from the standpoint of we shouldn't even consider that unless we know what else is going to go in the building because we don't want to be stuck with a white elephant. I mean, honestly, why is, well, why is Mercy giving this away for a dollar? The carrying costs are killing them. It's not that it, it, it's, it's free to them, nor is it free to us. We've yeah. got to have well, another site that hospital to go never, in there. That another hospital was planned at the same time as Bethesda North was planned by the same planners. Mm -hmm. The problem was the Kirby Road corridor um, yeah. was never Didn't finished, happen. and right. that just ended up sort of being out there in the middle of a field. Well, exactly. And if, but and if the were other you commissioners operating with had, the, this study, which uh, Dr. San Marco shared with we me? Had the, we had that study, yes. And, and are these the same numbers that you were operating with? Uh, and I, I have the feeling that you, the commissioners, thought this was going to be a lot more expensive than Dr. San Marco thinks and that the study thought. Is that true? Well, we don't even have the money for, for the crime lab right now, Dan, much less the, the equal or greater cost for the balance okay. of the building. So the problem is we as commissioners have to look at this from the broader perspective right. than the coroner that, does. But given that you don't have the money to do that, so the question is where do we go? 
What, That's a great what, question. What are the options that are on the table that you know of that you think are at least intriguing to look at? All right, so three years ago when I started, what were the options then? <laughs> They're not too different now. And I think it was, it was a frustration in not seeing any movement toward a solution that really spurred me into looking for a solution. So, every, and, so everybody says it's immediate and critical. Absolutely, but again, I say it's a matter of priorities. I mean, is, is getting a new TV for the stadium a priority, or is it keeping the people of Hamilton County safe and being able to provide uh, the public, the, the well, law enforcement well, let people me, what let they me need? Put, let me ask you this question. Well, with Through all this, due respect. No, no, no. I, I, want one more, I want one more question here. The, did you, in this process of negotiating, since you were elected, have you ever gotten to the point where you able you didn't you didn't get what you thought was the best solution? Right. Do you feel like you were able to move not just Todd but the other commissioners? You got to got to count be able to count to two in this situation. Right. Any sense that you've got any support to move things forward concretely? You know, what I've got is everybody acknowledging that there is a desperate need. What I don't have is a solution. And we have, I mean, I went out there beating the pavement looking for a solution, and Catholic Health Partners was the only one that came up with something that might work. And it wasn't ideal. It definitely wasn't ideal for us. I mean, what we initially started off with is, listen, this is a hospital. It's got stuff that we can use, operating rooms that we could use for autopsy suites, labs that we can use, clinical spaces that we can use with very little modification. So the architects initially gave me a verbal estimate that if we could retrofit what we do right into the spaces that are already there, the refrigerated space for pharmacy, for example, to use for the morgue, um, that it would be around 15 million. And yes, the rest of the building is very big. And the commissioner did say, we do have to find other uses. Right. So the law enforcement campus idea came up. So what, Todd, what about other options? This, you're, you're, this is gone. It is. With that vote. And, and frankly, so the, the decision what, should have, What are the other choices and what's the reality of getting one more vote from one of your Well, and, and on this, the, the decision really should have been made sooner than it was. As I've said, you know, I wanted to look at it from the standpoint of what else can go in there. And if we don't have any other uses for the building that are compatible with the county operation of a crime lab in a morgue, this is not the right building and we shouldn't spend any time looking at this. We got to be looking at well, other facilities. So, that this so that's gone. Some... Now there is a, okay. there is, um, a uh, medical office building uh, at another hospital site on Boudno, uh, west side as well, uh, that has been raised as a, a possible um, uh, fit for the use also, of also of, the mercy facility also the mercy facility and i believe i raised that you, well you did you did and uh, well is this a look i'm not competing for whose idea it is but, here but, but, we're, but, we're looking at that why why, why would that let me be finish, more please. viable why would finish. that be more viable well because it, it's you don't have 80 percent of a physical facility and 70 acres of land that comes with it there's no that there's no use for You've simply got that medical office building that okay, is in the, the medical mix for office study. building, yes, not the, but not it's the not hospital. Owned by the, hosp Mercy. the hospital is is uh, um, still operating as a hospital out there. Now, just the other day, I received a phone call from U.S. Senator Sherrod Brown about the closure of the NIOSH facility on Martin Luther King, and that he has put in for money to come with that, not only for a new location for NIOSH operations, but also for the retrofitting or, or usability and feasibility of the existing building on Martin Luther King to be put to another use. That may very well uh, be a site that is appropriate and is a fit. We don't know. We've engaged the Senator's office to get the, the plans and the specs for that building to begin examining that. And if that is a fit, you have the promise of federal money that comes with that, which helps us get to okay. the point where we might be able to pay for something. I've only got a minute left, so Dr. San Marco, of NIOSH is one possibility out there this, that has surfaced. Anything else that can be put on the table at the moment? Anything the county owns? Anything? 
You know, I've had some discussions about Deaconess, but that's been going on for about um, three years. And other than that, in a couple of the office buildings at Mercy Western Hills, I haven't heard about any other um, possibilities. And the NIOSH building, it'd be great if we can get federal funding. Um, somebody informed me yesterday afternoon that uh, Senator Brown's office said that may not be available. We'll have to see. NIOSH is certainly close. It could work, but we'll have to figure out if that well, building will work. It okay. is old. He called me directly, so I don't know. But okay. I would say one other thing, Dan, there, there, with respect to county facilities, there may be an answer there. But it would involve splitting the morgue from the crime lab, okay. and that, that may or may not what work. What we talked about earlier. Yeah. Thank you for making Newsmakers a part of your Sunday morning. Join us again next week, and have a good week.